Welcome to Macro Magic. I'm Sherry Damaris, and with me today is Patricio Garcia de Paredes. We're zooming him in from Japan, and Patricio and I teach at the Macrobiotic Global Institute, and we wanted to format this show to help uh, many people, uh, especially young people who are experiencing extreme depression and anxiety. Um, it's actually become rampant amongst um, college campuses. Um, if you read the news, you'll find out that many, many people are suffering from lack of energy, then it goes into depression, and then mood swings and um, a lot of anxiety. So one of the things you know we want to talk about today is ultra-processed foods, especially stimulants, um, which have become very popular on college campuses to stay up late and study, um, whether it be coffee or you know some energy drinks or um, even some extreme uh, over-the-counter drugs. And then we want to talk about how to remedy this situation in a simple way. So welcome, Patricio. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for inviting me. Tell us a little bit of why what is it in ultra processed foods that hurt the blood sugar level and pancreas in the body? Yes, a lot of the problem has to do with the intake of uh, carbohydrates. Um, you know, carbohydrates is a very important nutrient. Uh, many people don't know much about carbohydrates besides, you know, having like a little bit like a negative image because you gain weight. But actually, carbohydrates are very important. They are the source of our energy, and they are the main nutrient, actually. Um, according to the World Health Organizations, we need about five to seven times more carbohydrates than uh, protein. Mm. But the modern diet has both, um, especially the American diet, it's very, first, low in carbohydrates, good quality carbohydrates, and then the quality of the carbohydrates is very poor. And that's that's the problem with the highly processed foods that now many people calling ultra processed foods and also all the sugars and drinks and beverages. Um, the majority of people uh, don't have any good quality carbohydrates on a daily basis. And this has a lot of uh, influence uh, in, in various aspects of our health that are also related to um, our emotions and our energy levels, like you mentioned, you know, people start by getting tired and usually they get hungry all the time mm. and they kind of live more on a, on snacks type of foods uh, than real good, you know, like, like well-cooked food. And then as they get more tired and they want to cope with their daily activities, they, they end up taking m more sugar drinks and beverages. And even over time, as you also mentioned, uh, it moved on into stronger um, energy drinks, which mm -hmm. have, um, you know, like higher, stronger sweeteners. And so, so this is leading to really big imbalances within our body and the, in the sugar levels uh, in, in our body. Yeah, I noticed, um, you know, especially with young people, sort of, because um, we do a lot of oriental diagnosis and macrobiotics, they become more pale and weak. Mm -hmm. Their bone structure is a little bit more fragile, just simply mm -hmm. from having these foods from childhood and relying on these foods so often. Um, you know, I do a lot of work with the holistic health um, crews and we're always looking for snacks for the rooms to put on the people's pillows and stuff. And it always amazes me that all these foods, all these snack foods have thousands of ingredients in them. So even if they say they're healthy or they're organic, the ingredient list goes on and on and they're highly processed. They're not just simply putting, you know, an ingredient into the bar, but it's almost like a, uh, liquid that they develop in the in a laboratory. So those types of um, ingredients are really play havoc on the digestive tract, and mm -hmm. you know how your That's body right. breaks it down. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, you know, these 
this information is not new. We, we started to learn a lot about how carbohydrates influence blood sugar levels mm -hmm. already in the 1990s. You know, that's when they come up with the glycemic indexes and they started to measure each, so each source of carbohydrates and uh, how, how, how long does it take to enter our body and go the sugar levels, how much they go up in, in how much time. And even in, during those times, not only the refined carbohydrates, sugars, especially the sugars, but also the, the more you process a food, any food, wholesome food, whole grains, uh, seeds, nuts, beans, the more you process it, the more it changes into something which is similar to the body like sugar. Mm. So almost all the sources of carbohydrates that people put into their mouths like as you well mentioned all these kind of uh, uh, highly processed uh, snacks um, uh, they they are already very much broken down which means they enter the sugar the bloodstream very quickly and then the pancreas has to do a lot of work secreting insulin to bring it down but because it shoots up so high which is dangerous then the pancreas has to overwork and secrete excessive amount of insulin which actually brings the sugar levels down and they drop. It's what they call the sugar kind of uh, spikes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the mood, when you, when you eat it, your mood, because the energy goes up, maybe you feel like, like energized and a little bit better, but soon it goes down. Mm -hmm. And then this is called like hypoglycemia or, or chronic low blood sugar. And this is when it goes down and then it's the the hunger part, the feeling a little bit tired part, the you cannot concentrate part because your brain also needs and requires sugar, mm -hmm. good quality sugar. And then um, and then it leads into taking more sweets, more snacks, mm -hmm. and, and it starts to go like a little bit of a, a vicious circle, you may say, you know, like a mm -hmm. circle in which we are not taking good quality foods. And, and the more it drops over time, uh, it leads to uh, anxiety and depression and feeling a little bit kind of dark, uh, negative mm. to our life and, you know, uh, because, you know, sugar is, is something like energy. So if, if you're generating good energy from within your body, then you have generally like a positive, you know, more outgoing, more vitality. Uh, but if inside um, it's something like a candle, you know, it starts to go down, then that light is not kind of coming out, your energy is down. And then you have also kind of negative feelings toward what's going on. And for example, any problem around also like environmental problems or things that you hear, like problems around you start to become more anxious about those things mm. and do not generate from yourself like positive, um, images or you know energy to 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 cope with things and, and it's, mm -hmm. it, it can get really down and and people experience uh, many difficulties when it starts to get like that and what they don't know which is sad is that it has to do a lot with the diet and mm -hmm. our lifestyle also because eventually there's many aspects of our modern life that somehow also affect uh, our sugar levels mm -hmm. including being indoors a lot of the time mm -hmm a lot of, of um, iPhone use and, and computer use, you know, this uh, make our brain work very fast and it burns off a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. So after we spend a lot of time or re, uh, moderate time in front of the computer because our brain is working at a higher speed than usual, uh, the sugar level drops. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why it's so common to have, you know, sweetened coffees and and milkshakes and uh, snacks you know when we work in front of computers and we're constantly kind of uh, binging or eating mm -hmm. <laughs> things so so we really have to pay more attention to our way of uh you know diet lifestyle um to improve these things and they can all be improved but you need, first you need a little bit of information awareness and then stay, take some steps forward in, into improving. And it's more about managing than, um, uh, you know, uh, get, getting to know what you need to do in a, in, a, in a good direction and implementing more of those things and cutting down on the, especially the stronger ones that affect the blood sugar levels. 
So moving forward, um, we're going to give you a simple couple steps to, um, if you're feeling anxious and depressed, to change your blood sugar level and to just add some of these things to your daily routine. And one of them is at least take a half hour walk outside in the fresh air and the sunshine. And then Patricio, um, you and I discussed adding, you know, complex carbs to your diet. Um, maybe just adding oatmeal in the morning or beginning to add some brown rice to your weekly menu. Yeah, I think um, we need more freshly cooked meals with wholesome foods, whole, whole foods and, and processed foods. Uh, this is really lacking in the diet of so many people, you know. And uh, eating out can be really tricky because there's a lot of, you know, highly processed foods available mm -hmm. um, uh, in many of the places people eat regularly and in the cafeterias uh, if you don't know well how to select your food and then the processed foods that you eat, you know, as a snacks. So we need more, you know, like, like, like really well cooked meals uh, that include some whole grains on a regular basis. This is a wonderful source of carbohydrates. These are the long term, slowly burning type of carbohydrates that give you much more level e source of the energy. Mm -hmm. You don't get so hungry uh, so frequently. Uh, then we comes the vegetables and we need a wider selection of vegetables, you know, um, uh, many people eat uh, very few vegetables and one of the you know what the other thing that I hear a lot in the United States uh, actually complains from nutritionists is that when people hear about vegetables they end up eating more french fries and potatoes <laughs> and potatoes can be tricky because uh, people consider them vegetables but actually the type of starch and the carbohydrate is very similar to what we are talking now which is uh, kind of like sugars in a way refined sugars that bring sugar levels up and then they drop down. Mm -hmm. So that's not the most suitable type of vegetable. Uh, we need kind of natural sweet tasting vegetables that provide good source of carbohydrates. I'm talking about things like, like squashes and pumpkins and carrots and cabbages. And you know, potatoes. things that yep. mm -hmm. in the past people were eating more of and, and now suddenly we are eating much, much less. Also, we need more beans. Beans are also wonderful. People forget about beans, but you know, beans have complex carbohydrates, the fibers, the all kinds of good quality nutrients. You were also kind of mentioning that people look so weak nowadays, mm -hmm. their bones get weakened and so on. But that's a lot of because of the highly processed nature of our diet that mm -hmm. demineralizes the body and we're lacking what they like to call micronutrients, which is, you know, especially wide variety of of minerals and vitamins. And this comes from whole foods and, and mm -hmm. they're um, so depleted in the modern processed foods, even even though if they're organic, um, they're still what they're now calling ultra processed foods because of the, you know, they start with powders and they mm -hmm. start with, not with the whole food anymore, but with with already already processed foods, which they process again into- ah. <laughs> into Ultra, ultra some, processed. Uh, some, some, Yes, exactly. We're going to take a but commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to see quality. you create a beautiful soup, a millet okay. minestrone soup, um, using some of these grains that help with your blood sugar. Okay, and I can give some more hints, <laughs> ideas. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to Macro Magic. I'm with Patricio Garcia de Paredes, and we're talking about anxiety and depression. What are the causes, and what are some simple couple first step solutions you can take to get out of that rut? And Patricio mentioned uh, whole grains, eating whole foods, basically, that aren't processed, and then also beans, because they have a lot of carbohydrates in them as well as protein. So welcome back, Patricio. Um, we're going to demonstrate a really simple millet minestrone soup. Okay. Yes. Um, as we as we mentioned before, especially, um, um, I'd like people to consider including a little bit more of sweet tasting vegetables because mm. those are the ones that are high in complex carbohydrates that give a very nice kind of balance and long term source of energy. So today, actually, uh, you, you may make this ministry a bit more simple if you don't have so much variety. But, um, you know, I wanted to uh, give some ideas of what sweet vegetables kind of look like and what they could be. I have some onions. Today, I'm going to do kind of minestrone style. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to cut everything into dice. And... Uh, but I'm not going to saute with oil. I'm going to keep this really simple. Um, it's a nice kind of comforting soup, you may think. It's nice from when you come back home at, you know, at night and you're a little bit tired and you want something simple, comforting. But actually, this soup could be also very nice as a start in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes uh, we may not consider so much having a soup in the morning like this, but actually it's very energizing mm -hmm. because it combines also a little bit of uh, grains like I'm going to put a little bit later. Yeah, there's so a I funny some... story about millet. Um, you know, when we first started uh, teaching macrobiotics back in the 1960s or 70s, we weren't um, able to get all these whole grains because they didn't have whole foods and all these natural food stores. So oftentimes people go to bird stores and get the bird seed <laughs> that was actually <laughs> millet um, and millet there's a thousand different varieties that are grown in south america and throughout the world in india and each each type of millet um, in some cultures heals different parts of the body but millet overall is really really good for maintaining blood sugar and um, relaxing the spleen and pancreas. And so it's used oftentimes in drinks and soups and macrobiotics to help heal you know, pancreatic cancer and hypoglycemia and diabetes and just anxiety and depression, which come from your spleen pancreas not functioning correctly. That's right. It's a very nourishing grain. It's one that many people don't know about, but it's very easy to cook with it. It cooks in about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's just uh, that we didn't know much about it, uh, although it's a major grain in many areas. Now I live here in Japan, and there's so many varieties of millet, not only here in Japan, in China, but throughout all of Asia has been a major grain. Uh, we know a lot about rice, but actually millet was a major grain. And um, I really would like people to give it a try because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's easy to cook with. <laughs> and actually, now that you pointed that out, I started, uh, you know, this journey to healthy foods and wholesome foods, macroeconomic foods, when I was a kid in Spain in the 70s. <laughs> And uh, it was a similar story, you know, millet was the image is something like bird food. <laughs> Although uh, it was popularly eaten in the past, you know, it's just things change and, and people forget about it. Um, so now, now I have my, my veggies cut and into the pot. And this is how millet looks like. It's very small grain. Uh, as Sherry mentioned, there's many varieties. Uh, there's some that are kind of glutinous, that are a bit kind of sticky and gives a very nice kind of texture. Uh, you could also replace by other whole grains this soup. Um, we, we mentioned that, you know, this is a little bit especially nourishing to help with the sugar balance and, and the organs like the spleen and the pancreas, which are related to the uh, 
um, to the conditions that we're talking about. Um, but you know, like things like quinoa or amaranthus, and you could put some fresh corn in here because it's very nice and sweet too. A little bit of corn also in the summertime uh, would be very nice. So you can vary your vegetables around. So you could vary a little bit your grains around too. Mm -hmm. It's a very easy to make soup, uh, but at the same time, it's easy to replace the ingredients by uh, whatever you have available. Okay. Yeah, and, and you mentioned and about oatmeal too, right? Yeah. Like oats, uh, rolled oats, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, you could make it with rolled oats too. Mm -hmm. A bit more creamy, obviously, uh, but very rich and also uh, kind of comforting. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Patricio, because um, cooking rolled oats, you know, like an oatmeal and adding a little bit of millet is a simple, good first dish to try to learn. That's right. And, and many people may not have thought about it, but actually also the oats cooked with a little bit of vegetables together tastes very nice. Mm. Um, you know, you can put a pinch of salt or just a touch of salt. I will be seasoning with a little bit of salt later. Uh, I'm, I'm first going to bring it to a boil and then on a low flame you cook for about 10 minutes then you season with a little bit of salt and then you finish to cook it. All together it takes about about 20 minutes to get the, the millet nice and soft and a bit of you know like a creamy texture and, and the vegetables become very nice and, and sweet. So this is a very you know it, it's, it's a simple thing and uh, but this kind of, like for example, for a person who is uh, uh, tr trying to improve her mood and you know improve her condition and her eating habits, um, this would be a good uh, dish to start to make regularly in order to move little by little in, in a better direction, uh, as well as including any kind of whole grains. Uh, uh, including flour products, if you're eating a little bit of pasta and things like that, try to find the whole wheat pasta instead of the white one. Those things uh, all make a difference. Yeah, and, and besides, also, um, I think if people aren't familiar with millet, you know, you can start, like we said, with oatmeal or adding some brown rice to your diet. But then with the millet, just sprinkling a little bit inside your soup or eating it um, actually with sweet potatoes is nice. You could actually use some sweet potatoes instead of one of these vegetables mm. um, because they also give like a nice, nice, nice sweetness. Turnips also give a nice sweetness, rutabaga and so on. Mm -hmm. So there are many possibilities. And like you mentioned, actually, you know, for some people, they may say, ah, oh, but it's difficult, or I don't know where to find it. But actually, it's so much easier now. Mm -hmm. There is a wide range of grains now available. Millet is available in many places right now. So actually, things have improved. And we should also be uh, happy about that, that, you know, over the years, actually, the availability of whole foods has been increasing, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and there's many grains that people you know, in the past we didn't know much about, um, uh, you know, uh, varieties of beans. And so, you know, they are, th those foods are out there. We, we may not have known about it, but they are all out there. So now it's coming to a boil, cover, mm -hmm. lower the flame, and just simmer for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'll season with a little bit of salt and just finish to cook together with the salt. Yeah, and if so, those of you who are watching can't cook, or if you're on a college campus without a kitchen, um, just making better choices when you decide to eat out. You know, asking how the food was prepared, um, looking at the quality of the oil, asking if there's any sugar put into the dish or chemical um, soy sauces and things like that, and choosing restaurants or takeout uh, food that is not so ultra processed. I think that's an important point. Also, you know, people eventually, um, you have to also think uh, kind of like replacing, mm -hmm. not stopping altogether. It's better to replace. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, snacks, you know, 
still people are gonna want to have some snacks. So you need to also find some um, more simple sources of snacks, like you know, like vegetable sticks with a little bit of hummus, and and try to think more simple, fresh foods, including even a little bit of nuts, but the whole nuts, mm -hmm. not not you know all the time into like. Like like you mentioned, you know, even on those bars and so on. Sometimes some some may be quite wholesome with you know like four or five ingredients, but some of them they have like twenty, thirty ingredients, and everything is like you know. Yeah, very you'll find complex. them really hard to digest is the problem, and then also your liver has to work hard to deal with all the chemicals. We're gonna um, wrap things up, Patricio. Do you want to just share yeah. with us what? you've been doing with the uh, Macrobiotic Global Institute in terms of teaching? Yes, we have, uh, we have created some really wonderful courses and, and, and I always uh, recommend people to take a course because, you know, um, uh, it, it's wonderful to, to do little interviews, it's very nice to do one day cooking class, and, you know, but it's, it's kind of not enough. Uh, I think we need to become much better, well-informed, and to look at the way of eating in a little bit wider sense. Um, uh, so these, these courses kind of present a lot of information. Each time we focus on certain different uh, um, important aspects of our food and lifestyle that can be more conducive to our health and to our long-term health and balance, and also offers plenty of ideas for cooking um, so they're very informative and it's kind of uh, also kind of like a lot of guidance and practical information. Um, they, these courses are geared to, to really help people implement, you know, healthy dietary habits mm -hmm. and to guide them through the process also. So, um, so that's what I usually recommend to people because, uh, you know, there's so many questions that come up along the way. And uh, if you're well guided, then then it's something like a more long term something. You make effort, but it's a long term benefit. Well, we thank you for being on the show and demonstrating the millet minestrone soup. If you're interested to see the recipe, visit us at macromagic.com, and also come visit us and subscribe so you'll get newsletters every month on all our free workshops as well as our leveled programs. So thank you so much, Patricio. We always learn so much from you. Much. And it was wonderful to thank see you from Japan. Nice and to be here. Thank yes. you, viewers, for watching. And we'll see you next time.